So for the rest of the week, we're going to be looking at um, section 2.1, um, which talks about angles um, and how we measure them, and then some formulas we can use with angles. Okay, well, we'll look at some more formulas tomorrow. Uh, but the big thing today is just to learn one way we can measure an angle is degrees. What's the other way? Okay, that's what we're going to try to try to look at in a little bit. So before we can even talk about how we measure an angle, I'm going to describe what an angle is. Okay. So an angle is made up of basically two rays. Well, what's a ray? Basically like a, a line that only goes in one direction. And so it has a starting point. That's called the vertex. And it continues in one direction. Now, if you take two rays and you put them together, that's how you get an angle. So, here's a ray. There's another ray. And the way you have to put the two rays together is so they have a common vertex, just like that. Okay, so if you take two rays, put them together with a common vertex, you've just created an angle. Now, when we talk about shapes, any, any kind of polygon, triangle is the one we use most commonly. This, this, and that are also considered angles. But in that triangle I just drew, those sides aren't rays. What do you, what do you call these three sides in a triangle? They have line segments. So when you talk about a polygon, or like a shape, an angle is usually where two line segments come together. But if you're drawing a ray all by itself with another one, and this, this is not a polygon, because it, it doesn't close, it doesn't have a third side, it's just an angle, it can be made up of two rays. So either case, two rays can make up an angle, or in a polygon, two line segments. And there's another example of um, two rays with a, with a common vertex. So when we look at that angle, it basically has two sides to it. It has an initial and a terminal. That's the initial. That's the terminal. All right, so how do we know which one is which? There's another diagram. So the idea is, if you rotate inside the rays, not outside, but inside them, in a counterclockwise direction, where you end up in is the terminal side. Okay. So if you had, say, a ray like this and a ray like that, if you rotate inside in a counterclockwise direction, where you would stop is the terminal. Where you started is your initial. That's how you know which side is which. Any uh, question on that idea? That's so initial and terminal sides. So when we rotate between the two sides, right? Technically, you could go either way. You could go counterclockwise or you, you could go clockwise. Well, depending on which way you go, basically controls whether you have a positive or a negative angle. And I'm going to show you guys that as a um, picture in a second. But if the rotation is counterclockwise, then the angle is positive. If the rotation is clockwise, the angle is negative. I'm going to show you It's easier if I show you that with a, an interactive thing. All right, so here. All 
right, so what you're looking at here is a circle. And what I can do inside this circle is I can draw angles. I can't move the terminal side. All I can do is move the initial side. And notice as I rotate in a counterclockwise direction, the angle is positive. Right? Um, how much would it be if I went all the way around and put the terminal side right on top of the initial side? Yeah, 360 would be one full revolution. And then I could go even more. And now I'm dealing with angles that are more than one revolution, but still clockwise, uh, counterclockwise. Now I'm going to go clockwise. I'm going to put it back at zero. And if I start to rotate clockwise, it'd be nice if there was like a little arrow right there so you could see it. But you know I rotated clockwise because you just saw me do it. The angle is negative. So clockwise and counterclockwise just control whether it's a positive or a negative. If we're given the choice, what kind of angle do you think uh, is easier to work with? Positive, yeah, it's always easier to work with positive numbers than negative numbers. So we'll, we'll talk more about that uh, later on. All right. So the next thing um, is what's called the standard position for an angle. Basically, it gives us a way to draw it. So if I asked you guys to sketch a 90 degree angle, everybody's would kind of look the same, right? Some people might draw a 90 degree angle like that. Some people might draw it like that. Those are both 90 degree angles. One of those is standard position, the other one is not. So to draw an angle in standard position, two things have to happen. First of all, imagine you had a set of axes. The vertex of your angle has to be right at the origin. Okay? That's the first thing. So if you had a coordinate plane, you would put the vertex at the origin. The next thing is the initial side. Remember, there's initial and there's terminal. The initial has to be on the positive x-axis. That's that section right there. Every angle that I was drawing in this program for you, these are all in standard position. The vertex is always at the origin, never moves. And the initial side always stays right there on the positive x-axis. Terminal side can be wherever you want. But vertex has to be there initial side has to be there in order to have what's called standard position. And there's another example of, of an angle that's in standard position. Now, if I did this, is that standard position? No, what's wrong with it? Oh, the vertex isn't at the origin. The initial side is okay. It's on the positive x-axis. But the vertex isn't at the origin. Let's put it back. Now, what if I did something like that? Is that standard position? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with it this time? Uh, right, the initial side is not on the x-axis. looks like the terminal side is is almost on the y-axis, but the definition has nothing to do with the terminal side. It's the initial side has to be on the positive x-axis and the vertex at the origin, just like that. So any questions on what uh, standard position means for an angle? Okay. So now we're gonna talk about how we can measure angles. Okay, one fact you guys already told me. I asked you what would happen if I went all the way around, and somebody had said to me that you would get 360 degrees. Well, the other way we can measure an angle is called radiance. And what we want to figure out is, in a minute, I want to be able to erase that question mark and fill in a number. I want to know how many radians in one revolution. And once I know that, it's kind of like knowing this. In 12 feet, 
there's one inch. If I know that in 12 feet there's one inch, I can use that fact, which is a fact that I know, to figure out something I don't. Like, let's say you said how many inches in seven and a half feet. Well, as long as I know a fact to start with, I can figure out how many inches or feet in anything you want me to figure out. I just have to know something to start with. Now, that's everyone agree that that's true? 12 feet is... No, of course that's not true. Everyone agree that that's true? Yes. 12 inches, one foot. Now I could... I have to fix that. So let's say you wanted to know that's uh, X inches in seven and a half feet. All that matters is you start with something that's true. Could I do uh, this? Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. So it doesn't matter what you have that's true to start with. You just need something. So in my case, I'm just trying to find out how many radians are in 360 degrees. And that's just like knowing that there's 12 inches in one foot. Right? Once I know something, I can figure out anything else I want to know. But I need something, anything that's true to start with. So um, first thing we're going to do is just look at the word radian and just try to kind of explain what it is. Um, so if you look at the word radian, does it look kind of like any other word in math having to do with um, circles? Radius. Radius. Okay. Radian, radius. The words have it, R A D I both at the beginning. And when I show you what a radian is, when I write the definition, the definition is going to have something to do with a radius of a circle. <coughs> so I'm going to start with a picture of a circle right there. What I've done is I've drawn an angle inside the circle. And any uh, ray drawn from the center to the edge is called the radius. So I've labeled those R. Question on that picture. Now, those two rays come out from the center of the circle, and they hit here and here. If you trace the path between them, that is called an arc. It's part of the circumference of a circle. It's an arc. Now, if you drew this just right, so that, so you took a ruler and you measured the radius, maybe you got like five inches. And then you took a piece of string, put it on that arc in red, and then you straightened it out, put it on a ruler, and you also got five inches. So what I'm saying here is that if you drew it so the length of the arc came out exactly the same as the radius, then you've just drawn a picture of an angle that is one radian. Okay, and that's, that's pretty to scale of what it would look like. Doesn't really tell us how to convert between radians and degrees, but what it does do is tie the word radian and radius um, together. Now, most of the time, if you drew an angle in a circle and measured the arc, it wouldn't come out the same length as the radius. It would have to be drawn just perfect for that to happen. Okay. You might have a circle with an angle in it where the arc is way shorter than the radius. That's a very, very small arc. So because this arc in black is smaller than the radius, that's not a picture of what one radian would look like. Okay, and then kind of looking at it the other way, let's say I drew an angle like this. Now that arc in black is way bigger than the radius. It's a lot bigger. So this angle is a lot bigger than one radian. But if the arc and the radius are exactly the same length, then you have a picture of one radian. That fact is going to be important tomorrow. It's also good to explain radians a little bit, but it's going to be very important for a formula we're going to come up with tomorrow. All right. So. 
Now, the last thing we want to be able to figure out is how do we convert between these two units? How do we convert between degrees and radians? Well, I, I got to start you off with, with something okay, to figure this out. So the, the hint or the fact that I'm going to give you is this. It's not very long, but we just have to kind of understand what it, what it says. It says an angle's measurement in radians is numerically equal to the length of a corresponding arc on a unit circle. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to draw a picture of what that's saying, and I think the picture will help that to make more sense. But first thing I have to describe is that a unit circle. A circle, a unit circle, is just a circle with a certain radius, a very simple radius. Anyone think they could tell me what, if you had a circle, what, what's like the simplest number you could have for the radius? It would be a very easy number to do arithmetic. You could pick a circle and you could have any number you wanted for the radius, but you wanted to keep it very easy to do the math. What would be a very easy number for the radius to be? Well, one. Okay. And that's what a unit circle is. It's a circle with a radius of one. It's a very, very simple circle. Alright, so let's a circle, make a radius, and let's call that one. One what? One foot? One inch? Doesn't matter. One, one unit. So, let's draw that right there. So, look at what it says. It says that an angle, if you were to measure this angle from here to here in radians, it would be the same as something else in that picture. It would be the same as the length of the arc. Right there. So let's say that that angle was two radians, and this was one inch. If that angle was two radians, that arc would be two inches. If that angle was three radians, that arc would be three inches. If it was five radians, it would be five inches. The measure of the angle in radians is the same as the length of the arc. They're the exact same number. So whatever, whatever this number is right here that tells you how big the angle is, it's exactly the same as this number right here, which tells you how big the arc is. Any question on that idea? All right, so now we have to figure out that one foot 12 inches. We've got to figure out a fact, right? How do we know that there's one foot and 12 inches? Well, that, that's a definition. Right? It's not really something you can prove. It's just that's how you define a foot. A foot is made up of 12 inches, right? So the fact that we need here is kind of like that. It's, it's like a definition. It's not really something I can prove to you. It's kind of something I just have to ask you some questions and hopefully you'll remember it from geometry. So let's say that we had a circle. And in that circle, I drew that angle. What's the size of that angle? That's 90, right? And how much of the circle does that arc take up? It takes up one quarter, okay? Well, let's look at this. Let's draw this angle. What's the size of that angle? Half, and how much does that take up? In, de in like degrees? 180. 180, all right? So 90 degrees. 
took up a quarter of the circle. Right? 180 degrees was half the circle. Right. Um, what if I had something like this? That's 270. And how much of the circle does that take up? Three quarters. Three quarters. Okay, now this, this is the important part. Let's pretend that my arc isn't a quarter circle or a half circle or even three quarters. Let's pretend the arc is so big it now takes up the whole circle. Okay, so here's my circle. There's my initial side. There's my terminal side right on top of it. And the arc takes up the whole circle this time. How many degrees to go all the way around? 360. And what, so this is the angle of this column, and this is the part of circle in that column. What's the part of the circle that 360 takes up? One circle. It's the whole circle. So, what? Well, what we want to be able to do is if we can figure out how big that circle is, okay, which what, what's another name for an entire circle? It's an, it's an arc so big it takes the whole thing up. What do we, what do we call that? So when the arc gets to the point that it takes up the whole thing, you, really, you don't call it an arc anymore. It's the, the what of the circle? Circumference. Right? So basically, if you can find the circumference of that circle, right? let's go over here, um, up here. So if you can find the circumference, which is really an arc, it's just an arc so big it takes up the whole thing. But if you can find the circumference of the circle, Whatever the circumference is, that number is going to be exactly the same as the angle measurement in radians. So if you can tell me the circumference of the circle, that's exactly how many radians it would take to go all the way around the circle. And then we'll be able to fill in that question mark. We'll be able to say how many radians are in the circle. I just don't have a way to find it directly but I do have a way to find it indirectly. Okay. Because measuring the angle in radians, that number is exactly the same as the length of the arc in the circle. So what we need is the formula for the circumference of the circle. What's the formula for the circumference of a circle? <clears throat> Um, so that's the area. It does have pi in it, but pi r squared is the area, and we're actually, um, I think we might see that formula tomorrow or something. But anyone else remember the circumference? Yeah? 2 pi r. It's 2 pi r. Now, we're not dealing with just any random circle here. We're dealing with a unit circle. So what did we say that the radius is in a unit circle? 1. So there's the circumference of the unit circle. It takes two pi units, whatever the units are, feet, inches, doesn't matter. But it takes two pi units to go all the way around the unit circle. That number that you just found is equal to the angle measured in radians. So if it takes two pi units to go around the circumference, how many radians would it take to go around the circle? Two pi. They're exact. That's like when I gave you the example here. If this was two radians, that was two inches. If that was five radians, that was five inches. If that's two pi, that's two pi. So we just figured out a connection between degrees and radians. That's like knowing in one foot there's 12 inches. In 360 degrees, there's two pi radians. That's why if you noticed when I was drawing this, you might have seen that number at the bottom. Well, the top number is degrees, and the bottom number is 
radiance. If I get it right on 360, it says 2 pi. And that's where the 2 pi is. All right. So let's um, put that down. Let's put it right here. 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians. Now, you could tell someone that, but that's, that's not the simplest way to explain it. It's true. But that's like me telling you in 4 feet, there's 48 inches. Yeah, it's true, but there's an easier way to tell somebody that fact. Um, how, um, how about, uh, let's see, um, Chad, can you give me uh, a formula that gives me a connection between minutes and seconds? Uh, 60 seconds in one minute. He said 60 seconds in one minute. Okay, that's fine. Um, how about between... Um, Let's say hours and minutes. Um, Jack, could you give me a formula between hours and minutes? 60 minutes in one hour. Okay, and I'll give you one more. Um, there's seven days in one week. And I bet if I asked people for a conversion between days and weeks, that's what you would have told. You wouldn't have said there's 21 days and three weeks. What do all those conversions have in common? They all have a one in them. So usually when you want to tell somebody how to convert between two things, usually you give them a conversion with a one in it. Right? I didn't ask you guys to give me a one here. You just you told me a one. It's just what you normally do. So what I want to do is try to simplify this conversion so that there's a one in it. If you get a one on the left, that's going to convert one way between degrees and radians. If you get a one on the right, that's going to convert the other, right? So just to start making this a little bit smaller, I could divide each side by two. I could say in 180 degrees, there's pi radians. Still doesn't have a one in it, but at least I made each side a little bit smaller. Any questions on how I got that? Okay. Now, let's... Um, Let's see, which way do I want to do it first? Let's do the conversion between degrees and radians first. Okay. I want to get a 1 on this side. What could I do to both sides to turn the left-hand side into a 1? Yeah, divide both sides by 180. Okay. I'm going to come back to this in a little bit. But let's divide both sides by 180. Divide by 180. Divide by 180. 180 divided by 180. One degree equals pi over 180 radians. Now you have a conversion with a 1 in it. So we can use this formula to figure out anything we want to know to change degrees to radians. Let's say you wanted a formula for two degrees. You've got a formula for one degree. What would you multiply each side by to make this a formula for two degrees? Two. If you did a times two and a times two, now you would have a formula that says two degrees, two times one is two, equals, and you could type that in on a calculator and see what you get. Now, what if you wanted a formula for five degrees? What would you have to do here? Multiply each side by five. Now the left says five degrees equals, and you'd have to do that calculation now on your, on your calculator. It's not important what you put in the box. You can put a two, you can put a five, you can put an eight, put anything you want. This is what's important. Whatever you're trying to change from degrees to radians, you take that thing and you multiply it by pi and you divide by 180. Doesn't matter what you're trying to convert. You always multiply it by pi 
and then divide it by 180. So you want to convert 9 degrees to radians? Okay, take 9, multiply it by the number pi, and then divide that by 180. Right? And that's degrees to radians. And the last thing we'll look at, and then we'll just practice a few examples, is the other way. From a radian to a degree. <coughs> and for that, I'm going to go back to the equation that, that we have, that we got a 1 in. Okay? I'm going to go back to what's in that box in black. I'm just going to copy it over so I can kind of do what I just did on the left again. 180 degrees equals pi radians. This time, I want to get a 1 on the other side. Don't want to have a 1 on the left. I want to get a 1 on the right. So what would I have to do on both sides to get a 1 over here? Divide by pi. Divide by pi. Now you have a formula that says pi divided by pi is 1, they cancel out, 1 radian equals 180 over pi degrees. So that's a formula that would convert 1 radian to degrees. Now, what if you wanted a formula for 2 radians? What would you do to both sides? Double each side. If you did a times 2 here, and you put a times 2 here, now it would say 1 times 2 is 2 radians equals, and then you do out this calculation on the left. Um, what if you wanted a formula for 6 radians? Times by 6. 1 times 6, now it says 6 on the right. And whatever you do to the right, you have to do to the left in an equation to keep it balanced. So now if you did that out in your calculator, you'd have a formula for 6 radians. Again, what's in the green box doesn't matter. It's that part that matters. If you want to change a radian to a degree, you always multiply by 180 and divide by pi. That's how you always change radians to degrees. Multiply by 180 and divide by pi. Now, if you look at the two formulas we, or the, the two procedures we have, degrees to radians and radians to degrees, it's, um, it's very similar. They're almost the same thing. So it's very easy to mix them up. So if you don't want to mix them up, well, you can just write it on your reference sheet and you won't mix it up. Or I honestly never really try to remember which way is which. If you can remember two things, you can automatically figure out how to change between degrees and radians without remembering, wait, is this the multiply by pi or is this the divide by pi? Which one am I supposed to do? You won't even have to remember that. As long as you can remember two things. When I say degrees, I want you to think of the number 180, because okay? the 180 has a degree symbol. So whenever you hear the word degree, you always want to think 180. Whenever you hear the word radian, think pi. So if you can just connect those two things together, degrees, 180, radians, pi. And remember that. All of this automatically falls into place. Okay. So just remember, degrees 180, radians pi. Okay, so now let's try converting um, something in degrees to radians. So there's always two steps. It's always a fraction. It's either going to be pi over 180, or it's going to be 180 over pi and you can't mix it up. So, first thing is, if you wanted to think of 60 as a fraction, uh, what number could you put in the bottom? A one. a 1. Now, look at the directions. 
The goal is to convert the problem to radians. So when you're done, you don't want the degree symbol there anymore. You want that to go away. If you're going to multiply by a fraction, where would degrees have to go in this fraction to cancel out degrees in this fraction? Degrees would have to go in the bottom. Because when you have the same thing in the top and bottom of a fraction, it's gone. So degrees would have to go in the bottom, which means what would have to go in the top? The radians. Yeah. So radians would have to go in the top. Now, as long as you remember what I just said, you can figure out which one is which. You guys just said it. Pi is always the number that goes with radians. And what's the number that always goes with degrees? The 180. Degrees in the top, degrees in the bottom, cancels out. Um, and now, I would reduce that before you um, multiply. What number goes into both 60 and 180? 30. 30. Uh, you can go even, even bigger. 60. 60. 60 goes into 60 once. 60 goes into 183. And now just write down what you're left with. 1 times pi radians. Well, it's just 1 times pi is pi. And in the bottom, 1 times 3. Pi over 3. And that's, that's the answer. You don't have to divide that out unless they tell you to. We leave it as a fraction with pi. Now, let me bring that program back up, put it on 60 degrees, and see what we have. I'm going to put it on 60, as close as I can. And notice it got the same answer we did. Although the answer they wrote looks a little different. What's the difference between what's written in that bottom box and what I have written circled in green? It doesn't what? It doesn't show RAD. And in fact, most textbooks never do. So we have to get used to not seeing RAD there. So you might say, well, then how do you know it's radians? If you take the label away, how do you, how do you know? Well, you know because there's no degree symbol. There's only two options for measuring angles here. It's either degrees or radians. If it's degrees, you're going to see the little circle, and then you'll know. If the little circle's not there, then it has to be radians. Okay? So you just, I wrote it the first time so you could kind of see it, but we got to get used to um, not seeing it. All right, let's look at this one. So that's 150 degrees. So, um, Dakari, if we're going to change that to radians, we want the degrees to cancel out, where would it have to go? Uh, the bottom. It's got to go in the bottom, because you can think of that 150 as being in the top. So the degrees goes in the bottom, which means radians is in the top. You pretend like I just wrote it right there, but it's invisible. R-A-D. Okay, but we're not going to write it this time. Okay. Degrees, degrees cancel. Um, what number do we always put with the degree symbol? That's where we put the 180. And RAD is invisible right there. What always goes next to RAD? Pi. And now we just reduce. If you want, you can reduce by 10 first. Um, and then what number still goes into 15 and 18? Three. Three, three times five and three times six. So 150 degrees is 5 times pi divided by 6. And that is radians. You do not have to put RAD. Okay, let's check. Let's go to 150 and see what happens. Okay, notice as I'm kind of making my way to 150, some of these you see in decimals, and some of them you don't. Um, most of the ones that are multiples of 30 or 45 are going to be with pi. 132, that's just kind of a random number. That's not a multiple of 30. But 150 is. It's 30 times 5. So when we get to it, notice it changes it to a fraction with pi, just like we did. 5 pi over 6. All right. 
Let's try. Hi, let's try a negative. Still the same thing. The only difference is your final answer will have a negative in front. Great. Um, so, Sarah, we're going to change degrees to radians. Um, we want degrees to cancel. So, where do we put it? On the bottom. Yep. <clears throat> you can put degrees in the bottom. And, Kyler, what unit is going to be in the top? So degrees in the bottom, and the other unit is, um, that's going to be our next step. What is the pi? Pi feet, pi inches, pi radians, pi radians. So we're going to put, we'll put radians in the top. Once we know where each unit goes, put the right number with it. Pi goes with radians, 180 goes with degrees. Um, and Sarah, what number goes into the, or can you think of the biggest number that goes into those? Yeah. Um, nine. Um, yes, nine does. Um, and if you had to, you could do nine and you could do something again. But there's an even uh, bigger number. Um, Fifteen does, even bigger. Yep. Um, yes. Nothing wrong with doing those other ones you guys said. You're just going to have to do it twice. Right? But 45 is the biggest one. 45 goes in once. How many times does 45 go into uh, 180? Four. Four. So that's negative 1 pi, which usually we just write like that. Negative pi divided by 4. Now, what does that negative mean when we're talking about an angle? Right, it just means that you went clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So here's negative 45, and it writes it as negative pi over 4. Okay. Uh, I'm going to skip 90, it's kind of the same. Um, let's do this one, 107. Except this time, let's round um, to two decimal places. So you still do this the same way. The only difference is you don't have to reduce it because you just have to type the whole thing in on the calculator. All right. Um, so, Tabitha, what would I multiply by to change degrees into radians? Pi. Yep. Multiply by pi and divide by? 180 degrees. 180 degrees. Degrees is gone. Don't even bother reducing that. Just type it all in because they said round to two decimal places. You got 1.87. You got 1.87 when you did it? All right, so let me check. Did you use 3.14 or did you use the pi button? The button. The button, yes. You always want to make sure you use the button. I'll show you what happens if you don't on the next one. But what'd you get, 1.87? Yeah. No label needed on it because it is in radians. If you're not sure how to type it in, I'll, I'll, I'll do the next one on the calculator, um, which is going to be changing the other way. So those are all the problems I have changing degrees to radians. Questions on that before we finish up with the reverse. So the last thing is now changing radians to degrees. Now, the first one, I will write RAD so you can see it. But then after that, we're going to pretend like it's invisible. It's there, but we don't write it. Okay. So you've got pi over 6 radians. The goal is degrees. Right. So you want radians to cancel out. Radians is in the top. Where is radians going to go to cancel out in the other direction? Bottom. So this time, radians in the bottom. Degrees in the top. Kyle, when I put degrees, what number do I always connect with degrees? 180. Yeah. Okay, good. And I need my number in the bottom. John, what number do we always pull with radians? Pi. Yep. Pi. Okay. 
So before I multiply, what um what cancels out there? Yep, pi cancels. What else? Okay, we can reduce that, um, which I'll do in a second. But anything else, I can just cross out completely. Radians, which in the future we're not going to have to do because RAD is going to be invisible. Right? And yes, now we can reduce six into one eighty. Six goes into itself once. Six goes into one eighty thirty times. Notice I crossed out the number, not the degree symbol. Degree symbol still there. So we have thirty degrees divided by one. Um, when it's divided by one, do I do I have to even put that? No. So the answer is thirty degrees. Now, do I need the degree symbol there, or could I just leave it off? I need it, because if I leave it off, what's that? That's 30 radians. We don't want that. That's 30 degrees. And you could check it on that program. If you went to 30 degrees, you would see pi over 6. All right, let's try this one. But now, you've got to get used to pi, uh, the radian not being there. Same directions, convert from radians to degrees. Okay, um, so Taylor, uh, what number is going to go in the bottom? Pi. Pi, right? Because you have an invisible RAD in the top, so put RAD in the bottom, so that way it cancels. Um, if pi is in the bottom, Asia, what number is in the top? So what's the number that we always connect with degrees? 180, yeah. 180, and you gotta put that degree symbol. Okay, so pi cancels, RAD cancels, but that's invisible. Um, anything that I can reduce before I go ahead and multiply? Yeah. How many times does 2 go into 180? 90. So now what you're left with is 3 times 90, and then put the degree symbol on it. So what, um, what's 3 times 90? 270, and put the degree symbol on it. Yep. Any question on that one? All right, so the last one I want to do, it's going to be another... Um, round with your calculator, but I'm going to show you what happens if you use 3.14 versus the pi button. Okay, it's, just an, it's an accuracy. Uh, not that one. Let's do this one. So, round to two decimal places. And that's radians, three. You might think, well, where's the pi? doesn't have to always have a pi in it. Anything without a label when you're talking about an angle is radians. If you think it always has to have a pi in it, it's kind of like thinking every time you write a number, it has to have a 5 in it. Now I can write the number 61. It doesn't have a 5 in it. So not every number in radians always has a pi in it. But we still convert it the same way. Multiply by 180. Divide by pi. So multiply by 180, divide by pi. Now, this time I'm just going to put approximately equal to because this is going to be rounded. So if you do 3 times 180, uh, you're going to get 540. Now I'm going to take 540, and I'm going to hit divided by and use the pi button. Divided by pi. And that's the way I want you to do it. I get 171.89. And that's degrees. Should have a degree symbol. Now, let's do the same thing, but let's type in uh, 3.14 and see what you get. So, if that's an answer on a test, there's only one way to properly round to two decimal places 0.89. That, that is correct. If you do. 540 <coughs> divided by 3.14 instead. It's not like you got 0.88, you know, or something kind of close to 0.89. You got 97. Well, 
And it's kind of a big difference between 97 and 89. They're not, they're not that close. So make sure you always use the pi button. Any questions on that? Okay. So that's converting between radians and degrees. So tomorrow, we're going to look at two formulas. And the formulas for tomorrow only work in radians. So anytime you have a problem and they give you a degree to start with, you can't use it. The first step is going to be changing degrees to radians okay, to use the formula. So we'll, we'll use this um, again tomorrow. Okay, uh, so the homework is on page 99, and it is 36 to 68 even. Okay, so if you were here yesterday, um, I'll collect that sheet that I had you sign. Forgot to grab that at the beginning, but just take that out, I'll grab it. Um, if you weren't here, I will um, get you everything you need. Okay, you guys got about just under 15 minutes left. So you can use the time if you want to work on it quietly, that's fine. Um, if you need to borrow a book, that's fine too. Uh, just, please try to do something with the 15 minutes.